Contrary to some of the feasts you've seen on this channel, I love a taste of home that's budget friendly, simple, and comes together in less than 30 minutes. Let me show you how to make this amazing combination that will delight your family and friends. To make the saltfish, you can keep it basic with just onion, garlic, hot peppers and the saltfish. Or you can add sweet peppers, known as bell peppers, tomatoes or even okra. In the Caribbean, we have a make-do culture. We either borrow it from a neighbor or we make do with whatever we have on hand. No fuss, no complaints. First, we'll fill a wide, deep pot up to the midway point with water. And it's important to use wide and deep because it will overflow. To remove the excess salt from the salted fish, first rinse on the running water and soak several hours or overnight in water. If you don't have all that time, you can place the rinsed salted fish in a deep pot, as I've said, with water filled halfway to prevent overflowing over medium flame and we'll boil for 10 to 15 minutes. Medium high heat. Next we'll rinse and prep all the other ingredients. You may use whatever quantity or combination you wish. Today I'll use a whole red pepper and half of an orange, yellow and green bell pepper. I'm also using a couple of small tomatoes combination of cherry and other tomatoes that I just picked from the garden along with fresh thyme. Now that all the prep has been completed, let's start cooking! Well, technically, we still have to wait for the salted fish to finish boiling, then we have to drain and flake it. Next we'll flake the fish and this is very easy to do, it falls apart very easily and you can flake it as large or as small as you like. I don't like my chunks too large. 
Just keep in mind that it becomes smaller when you're cooking it. So this should be fine now. Next we'll put on the stove. Medium high heat. I'm going to measure out the olive oil and I'm using a very good quality extra virgin olive oil. Add enough oil to coat the bottom of your pot. And this is half cup. You can use less if you wish. We're going to raise the heat to high. Now that the oil is very, very hot, we'll add all the ingredients. And now I'll give it a good stir to bind. The heat is still on high. I'll cook it for about two minutes, nothing more, because we want the veggies to remain crisp and firm. We're just kissing it in the hot oil. It's been cooking for about two minutes. I'll know. I'll now add the salt fish, the flaked salted fish. And I'll also add the thyme leaves. This is about a tablespoon. And I'll also add the reserved scallions. Some of you call it green onions, some of you call it spring onion. I call it scallion. And now I'll give it a stir to combine and cook it only for about a minute or two. The entire cooking process comes together in less than five minutes. And we will not add any additional salt because that salt fish still has a little salt left. And once it combines with all the veggies and the herbs, the entire dish will have enough salt. But if, you, if your salt fish does not have enough salt at this point, you can certainly go on and add some. Next, I'll finish off with some coarsely ground black pepper. And one last stir and it's done. All the colors are still bright. It looks beautiful. It smells amazing. And let's give it a taste. Hmm, absolutely delicious. This is gonna go great with some fried bake or some dumplings, corn or flour dumpling, or boiled ground provision. And I'm going to make some, I'm personally going to make some flour dumplings to go with this. And that's it, it's done. To make the dumplings, I have four cups of flour, I'll add two teaspoons of salt and two teaspoons of brown sugar. The brown sugar is optional. I'll give it a mix. And once it's thoroughly combined, I'll start gradually adding the water and this water is lukewarm.
We will squeeze the dough together. And the dough is sticky, which means you can continue to add the dry flour to it. Squeezing to bring it together. We just removed it from the bowl to try to get all this extra dry flour here at the bottom and to clean our bowl. Cleaning our bowl means less work later on. I'm going to dip my hand into water just to bring it together. And once it's no longer shaggy, we'll start kneading. Knuckle press to smoothen. I'm dipping my hand into water one more time. Now I'll bring it towards the middle. We want a firm dough, not too soft. unless you want very airy dumplings. We're bringing it to the middle. We're knuckle pressing to smoothen the dough. Flip. Bring it towards the center. And that's it. I'm going to let it rest for about five minutes. To boil the dumplings, add about 8 cups of water and 1 tablespoon of salt to a medium sized pot over medium heat. Now that the dough has rested a minimum of 5 minutes, we'll divide it into 16 pieces. Again, keep in mind that you can shape your dumplings in any way, size or form. First we'll break off a piece and then we'll roll the dough up towards the top, pinching to seal and rotating. Then we'll form into a nice round ball which will make flattening into a circle much easier. Keep pressing until you achieve your desired size and thickness. It will take a little practice to get the hang of it, but be patient and have fun with the process. Then repeat with the remaining dough. You know I love shortcuts and variations, so let me show you how to get this done in the quickest way possible. And we're going to make a big lawyer, pulling the dough at the top and pinching the edges to seal. Next, we'll flatten to make a disc, just as if we were making sada roti. Then, using a rolling pin, we'll roll out the dough again to your desired thickness. Then use whatever you have on hand to cut out circles. And that, my friends, is a much easier way to make your dumplings. You decide what works for you and go with it.
Now that the water has come to a rolling boil, we'll add the dumplings in. And the heat is on medium high. We've added one tablespoon of Himalayan salt. Don't stir them yet. Give it a minute or two. You can reshape them or press them thinner as you're doing this. There's no right or wrong. It's still going to taste good. It's flour and salt. Nothing bad could happen. Does not have to be a perfect circle. Raising the heat to high. And that's it. Make sure they're fully submerged. And we'll boil it for 10 to 15 minutes until the dumplings are fully cooked. And now we'll give it a stir after a minute or two. We want it to set first in the hot water and then we'll stir it. If we stir it now, it's going to lose its shape. Now that it's firmed up, is a good time to give it a gentle stir. You don't have to touch it and stir it too often at this point. Just make sure it's not sticking at the bottom of the pot. Just let it boil another 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll eat. While the dumplings are cooking, we'll make some fried plantains. Let me know if you're a fellow plantain lover in the comments section below. Next, I'll give it a general dusting of salt to bring out the sweetness. Do not fling your plantain into the pot, place it gently and allow it to fry until it's dark golden brown or light golden brown according to your preference. I love mine's really dark. The plantains are almost done frying so I'll get everything plated and I hope you will join me for breakfast today. Thank you so much for watching till the end again, my friends. You're always welcome at our table. Give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed being in the kitchen with me. Share this video with your social media community and subscribe if you wish to be a part of the Cooking with Ria family. As always, I look forward to hearing from you below. Stay safe, be well, cook, share and love. Until next time, bye bye.